Hello and welcome to the Children's Ministry Podcast. My name is Brent Colby. <laughs> I'm Stephen Salmon, just like the fish. Stephen, how are you today? I'm, I'm good. You know, how come every time we start these, all of a sudden you go into like your "Come on down, the price is right" like voice? I'm thinking about maybe a latent dream I have of being like a radio announcer okay. or like a like a like a play-by-play -play sports guide, maybe, good. Well, or even a morning talk show. I feel like I could do it if I had the. You know, I'm an glad that we can make you realize Thank your you. dreams. Yeah, thank you. So I appreciate you as well at home for helping me do what I do. <laughs> All right, let's get started. Today's episode is not sponsored by Nitro Kids Conference. Oh yeah. Coming up in, what, just a couple days? Yeah, very soon, Nitro Kids Conference. If you've never been before in this event where kids experience God in a way they will never forget, yeah. it is lots of fun. This year we're down in Tacoma. New location. Yeah, it's gonna be New awesome. New location, yeah. And it's spy themed. So we have an incredible like drama slash message series put together. Top one worship team. Like it's gonna be amazing. Party. Are you gonna enter the stage to the theme song Secret Agent Man? I am not, but we may or may not have a repelling spy at Ooh. some point during the weekend. Oh yeah. So uh, Stephen, I have something awesome for you today. Okay. Some little something I like to call YouTube TV. Yeah. Well, I'm now, glad you call it that. Now, <laughs> I know what you're thinking. YouTube TV, we've had that. We've had YouTube Red, we've had YouTube right, this, we've had right. YouTube that, channels, whatever. Yeah. This is an actual subscription service where you can yeah. watch TV on YouTube. It's it's TV, and not just you, but up to six people can watch TV, live TV, with unlimited cloud-like yeah. storage, DVR. Now, awesome. are, you, are you one of those people, Stephen, who've never had like a cable or like a Comcast? I do not. Yeah. I don't, <laughs> I don't. I'm one of those, I guess you could say millennials, there's like, 45% of us that only pay for internet because we're like, we don't want all these cables going to the TV. Yeah, yeah, so that's awesome. So good solution. We'll Way see if awesome. they can. Uh, As YouTube creators, I feel like it's that's only true. natural that yeah. we kind of plug our parent company just a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I feel actually a lot of pride over, I can't believe yeah. we did this. Yeah. It's taken us a long time, but we are happy to bring you. It's really gonna actually let us bring what we do to the next level yeah. to you guys as well. Actually, uh, you know, we have our feeds up are all on iTunes now, right? We have our audio and video feed. This is really the next step. Yeah, so we're just, we're just bringing it to you. All right. So, hey, we're talking about kind of a very specific and unique topic today. Yeah. Um, something we talked about addressing earlier when we were talking about, when we were talking about what we're gonna talk about. We brought up earlier. the topic about talking about talking about reaching out to children, but not just any kids, children whose parents don't come to church. If you were confused at all by what Brent just said, we're talking about kids who come whose parents don't attend church and how to keep them. Yeah, that's Perfect. pretty much it. Yeah. yeah. So we know church kids, right? I was a church kid. Were you a church kid? I was. So you got church kids. Pretty much, you know, uh, they're there. They've they're got keys somehow. You're not even <laughs> sure. They're opening doors and going to places they shouldn't even be. And you're just going, oh my gosh, you're trying to do something, get ready. And all of a sudden, this tornado of kids just come through the room Tearing through and you're like eating your goldfish crackers, yeah. playing with your art supplies. Oh, man. They got Good your grief. puppet out, throwing them around. You're wondering why all your video games are already beat. You go on there, you get them going, and it's like completed. You're like, what's what happened yeah. here? Yeah, those are the church kids. But mm -hmm. we're not talking about them. We're talking yeah. about the not church kids. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, what's been your experience in the past? I mean, you live in a really cool community where your church is at. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like a like you can actually define your community, which, you know, not every place can do that. Sure. So how do you guys strategically approach kids who are like parents aren't at your church? Well, we actually had to change the way we do like check in, check out. <laughs> like right off the top because we started having kids who were riding their bikes or walking to church on their own right. to come and okay. their parents weren't with them and we we're like well your parents have to be here to check you out I'm like my parents are at home sleeping right like what do you want us to do yeah and so <laughs> we had to like change our policy that if those those students come like whoever has the pickup tag they that if it's them they can yeah. check themselves almost out kind of thing because it's not like hey uh johnny's here and <laughs> Church is over, and we're wondering if you're coming, you know, to get them and stuff. They're so. just stuck. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Their parents are like, no, that's good, you keep them. So we actually had to start like building kind of like policies in place, and then we really, it kind of goes down, even with the church kids, but you go, okay, I've got this, I got this child for an hour, you know, and what are we gonna do? How are we gonna compel them to want to 
come to church even if their parents aren't coming. Right. We, we do that through a couple of different ways, but we try to make the hour as engaging as possible for them to really make it fun and something different than they will get at school or even online. Yeah, you know, I've had those conversations with educators in our church before. I remember I was actually thinking about it this morning. Yeah. There was one time where we painted a, a kid's room in our church just bright colors. It was like yeah. neon orange, neon green, like this neon blue. And this educator had come in and was so upset that we painted the, the, the room for kids these bright, outrageous colors because there were colors that aren't often associated with learning environments. Oh, they were distracting, bright, sure. annoying colors. Yeah. And at the time, I didn't really have a good rebuttal. I was like, ah, it's not, you know, but today I would say, you know, it's not, it's a different type of right. environment we're creating here. We're not yeah. creating an eight hour a day learning environment. Yeah. This is a 60 minute. <laughs> And there's something to be said for a kid who's walking into a room and goes, school, immediately. Like, yeah. it almost turns them off to what, yeah. because they already do that during the week. You want something a little different. Yeah. So you guys, you've adopted systems to yeah. welcome them in. Yeah. You've made an environment that's different from yeah. what they might don't normally and then encounter. Events that they can have their parents either come and drop them off at. Okay. Um, kind of thing. So that it maybe it's like our Nerf war that we do. So it costs five dollars just to cover some of the things that we buy and you got to sign a waiver so that almost gets the parent in the door of right. the church and then the child comes and does this big two-hour nerf war we take over the sanctuary and everything and build all these obstacles it's just for the boys and we get hundreds of kids to come it's super awesome but yeah. we've actually had entire families start coming to the church through that because these kids were just either coming on their own or being brought by friends and then wanted to come to this event. And yeah. then through that, the parents came into church in a safe way because it wasn't actually church. They were just yeah. dropping their kid off or something. And then we're like, oh, it's not that scary. And that was all because of your Nerf war. Nerf war. <laughs> Nerf. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. This episode is also not sponsored by Nerf. One thing we would do, um, you know, it's different now because we would go into like our communities and we'd do like van pickups. Yes. I know like in the 80s, this was like yeah. a big like Bus busing ministry. ministry. Yeah. yeah, it was the thing. Oh, but man. But today, I just can't, for the life of me, I could not imagine driving a church bus through a neighborhood and just having kids just jump on hey, the bus. Hey, kids, come on on the bus. You don't know me, but we're going to go to church. Hey, oh. you, yeah, come on out of the house. Come and on. their parents were like, yeah, go. They'd never even been to our church before. They're just letting their kids just jump on our bus. Uh, we yeah. were probably literally handing out candy, saying, yeah. come on to our bus. Like, no, I would never do that today. But then it was like the thing to do. I knew a guy who, he did a bus ministry, but he had this like Wild West character that he had. And so okay. while they were driving the bus, he would have bandits on horses on the side of the road come and like try to like hold up the bus and they'd have to like fight them off with like fake guns and stuff. And Is this where you got your Nerf War idea? No, okay. no, no. Okay. But this was a place that so. I worked at and uh, I mean, that still sounds pretty cool, but also like if I'd gone back and told my parents today, yeah, these bandits came on horses, they were shooting guns and all this stuff on the way to church and it was great. And I'd be like, my parents would be like, you are never going back. <laughs> but that's, I mean, that's pretty cool. Oh, yeah, yeah. So well, that's cool. Yeah, there's lots, there's lots of, you just have to, I think the main thing is you have to realize. Um, you They're have to really, there. Yeah, and you have to challenge the assumptions that you're making of the, the normal kids that you have there. You got to. You got to work hard to make sure that the other the other kids yeah. are welcome too. You want to go after them because they are a group, and you don't want to be letting anyone fall through the cracks. And so, you know, if you're o if we're only catering to kids who already get it, I guess you know they're already they're already in. Maybe they ask Jesus in their heart when they're three and they're here, and they and they re they really do get it. And yeah. if that's who we're talking to, I think we're missing a big. And sometimes there's a little bit of a stigma between of, of kids who come whose parents don't come. It's like they're the problem kids or they're, yeah. you know, they might be a little bit more rowdy or different stuff because they're just like, oh, I don't get it. I don't know what's going on. And, you know, I think we really got to put a concerted effort towards yeah. them. Yeah. We always try to draw a profile of who our audience is before yeah. events and stuff. Yeah, and yeah. I think just expanding that definition to include kids whose parents aren't there right. will really be a huge blessing to your church and open lots of doors like the Nerf Wars sounds like they've opened. That's a fun yeah. event and it's 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 not very expensive. You got anyone can do it. Yeah, it's awesome. Super awesome. Hey, uh, I have a little challenge for you. Okay, uh, I love these. Not too long ago, we had the Oscars. Okay. I'm sure you watched the yeah. Oscars. You're a movie guy, you like oh, movies, right? Oh man, that ending though. Yeah, Woo. it was good. Uh, another award ceremony that happens around the same time, a little less 
um, pronounced is called the Razzies. Have you ever heard of the Ra the Razzie Awards? Yes, I've heard of it. Uh, the Oscars highlight and honor the best of film for the year. Right. The yeah, Razzies yeah. do the exact opposite. Okay. So I'm going to see how well you know your bad I think some of my film. favorite movies have won Razzie Awards. Okay. Waterworld, Kevin Cosner. Okay, yeah. yeah. Great movie. I'm going to ask you three Great questions. Movie. Here's what I want. I okay. want you to think of Not the worst looking. actress, worst 2017, actor, 2016. 2016, and then the worst picture. Actress, actor, and picture. Yeah. Oh, you know, okay. I'm just going to... Can read. you give me a... Yes. Like, a like Here's the sick, nominations. Okay, yeah, okay thank you. Uh, worst actress. We'll okay, start there. Okay, okay. Megan Fox, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Okay. Tyler Perry for Boo, a Medea Halloween, or Becky Turner as Hillary Clinton in Hillary's America, The Secret History of the Democratic Megan Party. Fox. The winner of the Razzie for worst Megan Fox. actress is Becky Turner. Oh, yeah, I don't know who she that is. eked so. out. I don't either. Okay, here yeah. we go. Worst actor. Are you ready for this? Sorry, Becky. <clears throat> I'm sure I'm sure you're great, but uh, maybe this is a bad movie. Worst actor. Is it A, Ben Affleck for his role in Batman v Superman? Yeah, that's colon, part of that movie. Dawn of Justice. Okay. Is it B, Gerald, 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 Gerald Butler? How do you say his name? Gerard Butler. Gerard Butler. Leonidas. For Gods of Egypt and London Has movie. Fallen. Is he nominated? Don't Twice. Look. Just for the He's same. in both those movies. <laughs> He's just not, they just threw both movies in together. That's rough. Or is it Dinesh D'Souza as himself in Hillary's America, The Secret History of the Democratic Party? Well, uh, I'm going to say if Becky won the other one, let's go with, well, Gerard Butler's awesome. Gods, Gods of Egypt's on Netflix. I know it's heathen, pagan, but it's a really fun movie. <laughs> Is that get your vote? Uh, no, Dinesh, the other guy. The winner is Dinesh. Yeah. Dinesh D'Souza as himself. That, dude, that has to sting a little bit to get voted as the worst actor when you're playing yourself because you're not even acting. It's not like, really, not really, yeah, that's harsh. It's like you're just the worst person. Oh. Hey, you're the worst person. I don't think anyone realized that until you just brought it up. <laughs> you're so the worst person at being that's you. That's way worse. Not because no. you're bad at being you, you're just bad. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. Basically, you can't even pretend to be you. <sighs> okay, here we go. Best uh, picture. Worst picture of the year. I'm going to read all picture. the nominees. There's six. Okay. okay, wow. Batman versus Superman, Dawn of Justice. Okay. Dirty Grandpa. Gods of Egypt. So good. Hillary's America. Independence Day Resurgence. Never saw it. Or Zoolander 2. No. Okay. Dude, Will Ferrell's in that. Uh, I'm going to go with Hillary's America. Hillary's America is correct. Yeah, They're on a winning streak. I have never seen it, never heard of it. But but I, uh, yeah. I'm sure it's delightfully bad. So. Gods of Egypt, great movie. <laughs> Never saw Zoolander 2, but the preview with Will Ferrell, I mean, he's funny, but he, yeah. So hopefully some of you took away some good ideas about reaching the children whose parents don't come to church. Others of you are going to go home. And recognizing that they're out there. Yeah. yeah. Others of you are going to go home and watch Gods of Egypt on Netflix. Either way, thanks for joining us today. I'm Stephen Salmon. And I'm Brett Colby. Signing off. <laughs>